good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. And with me in the studio now is Dr. Manfred Tetz. He's the director of an eye clinic here in Berlin. And you conducted more than 60,000 eye operations yourself, is this right? That's correct, yeah. Oh, what a great number. <laughs> Talking about glaucoma, what is the cause of this disease? Well, our eyeball needs to inflate itself. It doesn't do that with air, it does it with water. The own aqueous, what we call it. And to keep its form and to work nicely. Now, this water is consistently built and it needs to flow out of the eye. And this goes through a meshwork, like a sponge, and into a canal, which is called the Schlems Canal. And if there is an imp impedance in this system and the water can't go out easily, the pressure goes up. And this causes damage to the optic nerve. So it's something about the draining of the water, so getting it out of the eye. It's That's not correct. about production. That's correct. Mm, okay. And who is at a particular risk for developing glaucoma? Well, the Classic primary open angle glaucoma is the disease of the elderly. So the risk increases as we're getting older because this system suffers from aging, in, in, in other words. So every decade, the risk doubles to develop glaucoma above the age of 40. And what about genetics? Can you inherit glaucoma? Yes, there is a genetic risk. And that risk is in the means that if you have family members with an open angle glaucoma, the risk increases three to ninefold. Okay, so if my grandma suffered from glaucoma, I'm very likely to uh, suffer from it You're more well. likely at a three to nine times more. Risk. What about on a worldwide view? Are there some nations who suffer more from glaucoma than others? Yes, um, if you have a darker skin, so the darker the color of your skin, the higher the risk for glaucoma, it actually increases uh, by about five to six times. How long does it take for glaucoma to develop and, and how rapidly might it lead to blindness? Well, it's a chronic damage of the optic nerves. Of course, if the pressure is very high, you know, normal pressure 10 to 20, but if it's very high 50 or 60, which we sometimes see in Africa, then the damage can occur quite fast within one or two years. But normally it takes several years to even decades to chronically damage nerve fiber by nerve fiber. And is there a way for the patient to tell that he's got a elevated eye pressure? If the patient notices visual field defects in his daily life, already 70% of his optic nerve are damaged. So yes, there is a way to notice it, but you should actually notice before the damage has come to that point. Because it's very late in the cause of the disease. It's late in the cause of the disease, yes. So, so um, if you go to an eye doctor and he says, yes, you've got glaucoma, what's the usual treatment? Well, there's usually a stage treatment and the old-fashioned treatment strategy is first you use eye drops to lower the intraocular pressure. Secondly, you might try several laser uh, means for the mesh work for the outflow system. And finally, there is glaucoma surgery. However, with more modern glaucoma surgeries, which address the outflow system itself, the canal that is actually impeded, um, the, the means are used earlier, so there is also a tendency towards earlier surgical treatment of glaucoma with modern technology. And, and what about the laser treatment? Is it superior to, to using a knife? Uh, laser treatment in general is being used in the eye a lot of times, but we are talking now about a certain laser called ALT, which is not superior to knife because the, the, the working action is not lasting as long as it should do. Okay. When light falls into our eye, it has to pass through the lens, a tiny structure in the front of the eyeball. And if this lens is clear, light passes through it perfectly. But sometimes the lens gets cloudy, impeding our vision. This condition is called a cataract. And if I suffer from a cataract, is an operation, surgery, the only way to go? Yes. Currently, it's the only way to go. We need to replace the cloudy lens by a clear one. But if you replace the lens, you healed, then you're not getting blind. That's correct. And, and why is it that uh, cataract is the major cause for blindness all over the world if it's so easily treated? Well, according to the WHO, it is really a major cause for blindness. And the reason for that is that in a lot of countries, not like in Germany or the US, people do not have access to the medical systems in a way that we have access to it. So it's actually a lack of access of a lot of patients for having their cataract surgery performed. 
Dr. Tetz, can we leave this artificial lens in there forever or does it have to come out at some point? Nowadays, modern lenses that are put in the eye replacing the cataract lens will remain there till the patient dies. So yes, we can leave it in there. And is there any risk of the body rejecting the artificial lens? The artificial lens does not get in any contact with vascularized tissues. It's actually in the old container of the original lens in the so-called capsular bag, away from everything that is important. So yes, uh, it is no major risk for this implant to be rejected. And the patient cannot feel the lens itself? or is No, it like not at all. Body? There is no nerve tissue in the vicinity, nothing. Okay, great. And this artificial lens doesn't cloud up, it doesn't get blurred, but um, the natural lens in the first place was blurred. So what causes the lens to blur? Well, our lens is made from very special proteins. These proteins are beauty of the nature. They're crystal clear and we can look through it. But at, like everything in the body, everything does age. And these uh, proteins, the so-called crystallins, they do age and as they age, they change um, their composition and then the lens itself becomes cloudy and at the end it obstructs our vision. Is it, uh, are you able to suffer at the same time from glaucoma and cataract? Yes, it's actually not very uncommon, especially with some syndromes like pseudoexfoliation in the elderly. It's an elderly disease, so they have a cataract, they have a glaucoma. And especially in these patients, modern types of surgeries like Schlem's canal surgery, as it was shown in the illustration before, can be uh, nicely combined with a cataract operation. In fact, the effect of the pressure lowering is better if you combine cataract and Schlem's canal surgery okay. than if you do one and the other separate. Okay. And is there any way preventing those diseases like glaucoma and cataract in the first place? Well, prevention is not really the right term because you notice glaucoma very late. So for glaucoma, you have to see an eye doctor above the age of 40 uh, regularly to check whether there's any disease beginning. If you notice it yourself, it's too late. In the cataract, you will notice some visual deterioration. Once you notice that, this is the time to see your eye doctor. But in the glaucoma, there's no early onset signs for the patients no, to see? No, unfortunately not. If they, the patients notice their visual field defects, it's already late disease. More than 70% of the optic nerve are gone. So, so how often, again, does, do patients need to get their eye tested on glaucoma? We recommend above 40 that they have their eyes checked every two to three years and above 65 at least annually. Okay. Anything to do with nutrition? Can you save your eyes using the right nutrients? Well, for cataract, we do not know anything that has shown in studies that it will really prevent the uh, lens from going cloudy. It's like, can we prevent aging in general? Okay. It's very difficult. <laughs> Dr. Tetz, thanks so much for being with us in the studio. You're Thank welcome. You.